Well, hello, Mr. Eicher here. Thanks for joining me. We're going to be looking at the solution and a little bit of the scoring of 2013 number five, eggs. It has two parts, part A and part B, and part B has two subparts, BI and BII. So let's check it out. Each full carton of grade A eggs consists of one randomly selected empty carton container and 12 randomly selected eggs. So we have a container and we have 12 eggs. I'm not going to actually draw all the eggs, but you got 12 eggs in the container in an empty container. The weights of the full carton, oh, that's important. The full carton are approximately normal, that's important too, with a mean of 840 grams and a standard deviation of 7.9 grams. What is the probability that a randomly selected full carton will weigh more than 850 grams? Well, we were told that we have an approximately normal distribution, so let's sketch our normal curve. We were told the mean is 840 grams. The standard deviation of a full carton is 7.9 grams. And 850 it looks like it's going to be more than one standard deviation above the mean, so I might guess right about here, 850 and we want more than the probability that the uh, weight w of a full carton weight to full carton is greater than 850 grams is what we're looking for so we're shading to the right uh, now i like to remind you about z scores this would be the probability that the z score is greater than the boundary 850 minus the mean 840 divided by the standard deviation of 7.9. Uh, from there, we can calculate the probability by using table A or using the normal CDF command. Our lower bound would be 850. Our upper bound is some large number. Our mean is 840, and our standard deviation is 7.9. Uh, if you use the z-score, this z-score would be the probability that the z-score is greater than 1.2658. Uh, and you could also use the normal CDF command with that z-score as your lower bound, some large number for your upper bound. And when we standardize, as in when we find a z-score, our mean is now 0, and our standard deviation is now 1. Uh, either way, we'll get the same answer. It might be off by a decimal or two, but uh, it will be essentially the same answer. And that answer is 0 0.1028. So that is our probability. It's a number between 0 and 1. That's our probability that we get a full carton of eggs more than 850 grams. What do you need to include to get full credit on the AP exam, at least according to past rubrics? Uh, writing just this, normal CDF, labeling the parameters and getting the answer, that would be enough to give you an E essentially correct on the exam. However, if you wrote this, notice I'm not circling the parameters that I've defined underneath and this, that would be good enough for an incomplete. If you don't label these and you don't have anything else written on your paper, just that what I have circled, you would not get any credit on the AP exam. I would recommend for sure to draw a sketch of the normal curve and then use normal CDF and then include the answer. That's what I would like to see. What I would really like to see if you're really a professional is to include this probability statement. However, if you write the probability statement incorrectly, you could lose points. So make sure you know what you're doing if you're going to write a z-score on there. But that was part A. It's worth 1.1e. 1 1 Let's look at part B. The weights of the empty cardboard containers have a mean of 20 grams and a standard deviation of 1.7 grams. It is reasonable to assume independence between the weights of the empty cardboard containers and the weights of the eggs. It is also reasonable to assume independence among the weights of the 12 eggs that are randomly selected for each carton. Let the random variable x be the weight of a single randomly selected egg. So what we have here is that in part A, we were told the mean of a full carton, 12 eggs plus the carton, is 840 grams. Here, you're told an empty carton, here's an empty carton, 
Empty carton, its mean is 20 grams. We'd like to know the weight of a single egg. So we have to kind of work backwards to figure out if there are 12 in a container and we know the empty container, then we can work backwards. So what is the mean of x? x is the random variable x is a single egg. So let's do part i first. We would have the full carton, we'll write it like this, the full carton is the empty container plus all these eggs. We'll call it egg one plus egg two plus egg three plus all the way until we get to the 12th egg, egg 12. I guess we could have written this as x sub one, x sub two, x sub three, since x is the weight of an egg. Now we would like, or we're told that the mean of a full carton, well that would be the mean of the empty carton plus the mean of each of these eggs, two plus dot dot dot, till we get to the very last mean of egg number 12. Uh, we're told in part A that the mean of the full carton is 840 grams. We're told in this part that the mean of an empty carton is 20 grams. And each of these means here of these uh, 12 eggs are the same. And that's what we're looking for. So we would have 12 times the mean of a single egg x. Solving this, subtract uh, 20 from both sides. 820 equals 12 times the mean we're looking for, divided by 12, and we get the mean of a single egg. This part, B sub I, was scored on its own. If you had the correct 68.3 grams as the mean, with work shown, then that would be enough for an E. Ways that a student would get a partial, for instance, if you only wrote, let's ignore all of this on the screen right here, and you only wrote 820 over 12 equals 68.3 grams, um, this was deemed poor communication because you've done too many steps at once. You didn't show like the subtraction of where the 820 came from. So that would be a partial if you did something like that. So definitely I encourage you to show uh, more work is better than too little work. Let's now look at part ii on part b. What is the standard deviation of x? A lot of students on this question scored e on the first part, e on the second part, and then an i on this part. And that would be a score of a two, which is still a good score. You're still passing the exam if you get twos across the board. But let's see what happened and why this is difficult on ii. I'm gonna erase this information that we had from the mean. Uh, but I'm going to leave that first mathematical statement there, full carton equals the empty carton plus the egg, 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 until you have 12 eggs. We would like the standard deviation. So let's think of it this way. If we had the standard deviation of the full carton, that would equal the standard deviation of the empty carton plus the standard deviation of one egg. But wait a second, we have multiple random variables here, multiple random variables and standard deviations do not add. We were told in the directions that these are independent random variables. So we actually should not just have this, let me write this out a little bit, plus dot 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 plus standard deviation of egg 12. We need to change each of these standard deviations to variance. Put squares on all of these. Squared right there. Now this is the correct mathematical statement combining variances of random variables. We cannot combine or add standard deviations of random variables. So let's see what this gets us. We were told, let me erase these for now, we were told that a full container, the standard deviation of a full container was 7.9, and the standard deviation of the empty container was 1.7 grams. So a full container would be the standard deviation of a full container 7.9 squared. The empty container is 1.7 squared. And then each of these eggs are gonna have the same standard deviation. That's what we're looking for, standard deviation of x. And we have 12 of those standard deviations 
of x, and that's really the variance of x. So this is the equation. I'm going to highlight that because this is the equation we would need to solve in order to find the standard deviation of x. So solving this, we would have 7.9 squared minus 1.7 squared, and then divide both sides by 12. So this is the mathematical expression that you would need to use to solve for the standard deviation of a single egg. So we would get a correct answer that the standard deviation of a single egg is 2.2, oops, 2.3 grams. There's our standard deviation. Let me show you some ways that you could get a partial. But before that, I wanted to point out, sometimes students will say, I'm uncomfortable with this minus here because I thought we always used addition with the Pythagorean theorem of statistics. Well, the addition occurs right here. The reason why we do a subtraction is that it's just an algebra question. Once we get to this highlighted part right here, we have used the Pythagorean theorem of statistics correctly. These are variances, they're independent variables. But in solving for this standard deviation of a single egg, in solving for that, we do end up solving and needing a subtraction sign. Uh, but the correct answer is this. So if you actually got this with work, then that would be an E. But let me show you what some partials will look like from the official scoring guidelines. So part B I I was scored essentially correct if you combine variances and correctly get the following three components, that you subtract the variances, you correctly use 12 in the formula in the right spot, and you report the correct standard deviation that's consistent with part one and part two. Uh, you would get a partial if you combine variances and correctly include two of those three components above. So let me show you some examples. If you did this, this is a very common mistake. Students really wanting to do addition there, but uh, you would need to do subtraction since we're subtracting off the uh, weight, the standard deviation of the empty carton or the variance of the empty carton. Um, so if you had anything on the left here, those would all be partials. So if you had any of those answers. If you had these answers on the right, this would be scored an I, if you had either of those two answers. Also, if you had this answer down here, that would be scored an I. Uh, and then you can score it from there. The scoring should be right here. If you got all three I's, that's a four. Kudos to you, not many people got fours. Uh, two essentially correct in one partial would be a three. Or one essentially correct in two partials was a three. That was a generous. That's usually scored a two, but here it scored a three, since students weren't doing very well, I guess. Uh, you could do a uh, two essential correct and an incorrect. Maybe you got the first two parts right and then the latter part wrong. Uh, or one essential correct, one partial, one incorrect. That would be a two. Or three partials. That would be a two. And lastly, you got a minimal response of one. If you had one part essentially correct and the other two parts were incorrect, or you got one part partially or two parts partially correct and the other parts uh, incorrect. I hope that video is helpful for you. I really like this question. It's a very fascinating question. I like it too because part A, pretty accessible. Part B1, pretty accessible. Part B2, you really need to know your stuff to be able to earn a four. Getting fours on AP Stats FRQs is really, really good. So getting a two or three is very, very respectable score. Thanks for watching this video. I'll see you next time.